Hi everyone, welcome back to another session of RBI 247, wherein we discuss finance current affairs which are relevant for RBI grade B and SEBI grade A exam. So in today's video, we're not just going to talk about any particular news that is there. Obviously, we're going to talk about this digital payment index news. But other than that, we're going to discuss a lot of points which will be relevant for specially phase two descriptive answer writing and also your interviews. Okay, so the first topic that we're going to talk about today is the RBI governor's keynote address at FIMDA. The second one will be about RBI's digital payment index and the third one will be about digital tech powering economic reforms. So economic survey has been introduced wherein the chief economic advisor has said that because of digital technology, digital infrastructure, there will be a significant increase in GDP. And thus, there was an article in news that talked about a few of the digital technological in, digital technologies introduced, which will help increase the GDP further. We are going to discuss all of these and the first and the third one will be relevant for phase two descriptive answer writing. Okay, so the first news is about the keynote address of RBI governor. So the RBI governor was recently a part of annual FIMDA conference. FIMDA is Fixed uh, Income Money Market Derivative Association of India. It is just a voluntary body uh, working towards bonds and derivatives and financial instruments, which works with uh, various regulators like RBI and works with uh, works under various issues, helps to tackle various issues, which uh, impact the economy, especially issues in the uh, fixed income money market uh, derivatives. Okay. So yes, the RBI governor gave a speech on the topic financial markets in India in pursuit of stability and development. We'll see what all the topics that were discussed in his keynote speech. So he talked about storms, various storms. The world has moved from one storm to another over the years. And how has RBI helped the, uh, the economy of India from managing these storms? Okay, so from global financial crisis, which took place in 2007-8, which had a ripple effect in many economies, to the Eurozone sovereign debt crisis. So in 2009 to 2010s, a few uh, years tha, it was a sovereign debt crisis wherein the many countries of Europe, many countries of Europe were unable to pay back their governments. So governments were in a debt crisis mein fas thi in this Eurozone sovereign debt crisis. From taper tantrums to Brexit. What is taper tantrums? So Fed tapering, you have heard hoga when federal bank the federal reserve of us the federal reserve of us what they do is they follow quantitative easing policies wherein they purchase uh, bonds from banks and uh, inject liquidity in, uh, in the banks in the economy and suddenly when they withdraw this quantitative easing the withdrawal of quantitative easing is nothing but fed tapering so this fed tapering took place after the global financial crisis and it had a huge impact not just in the US but other countries as well. How? Bohat zyada outflows hone lag gai the from India. So FDIs jo aate hai, instead of FDIs there were a lot of outflows from foreign depositors because of taper tantrums and then Brexit took place. Here we are talking about pure economy, world economy mein kya kya storms aaya hai over the years. So, quantitative easing se lekar monetary tightening, jo abhi recently bhi ho raha hai monetary tightening, the Fed uh, Reserve of the US is moving towards monetary tightening because of high inflation. And then there was pandemic, also the geopolitical crisis, the Russia-Ukraine war that we have been witnessing especially in last one year. So, the RBI governor has talked about all of these and he has talked the how RBI has managed and has overcome all these storms and come out even stronger. Okay, so against this backdrop, the journey of Indian financial market has been driven by two key objectives. The financial, Indian financial markets ki jo journey hai, it has been twofold. Number one on stability and on development. 
that right to the, so in before 1980s what used to happen was there was fixed exchange rates the government had control on interest rates of not just government securities but also the interest rates that are going to be prevailing in the market right Ma, uh, market uh, supply and demand pe bahut zyada kam focus tha more focus was on government administered interest rate so uh, uh, interest rate were administered there was administered interest rate regime foreign uh, fixed exchange rate system tha there was no floating exchange rate system or managed floating exchange rate system to supply or demand ke basis pe exchange rate nahi nikalta tha at the same time the government had a lot of roles capital account convertibility bhi possible nahi thi there were a lot of restrictions on this as well which have been eased over the years especially because of a few key legislations for example fema was introduced which replaced fera to pehle फॉरन एक्सचेंज रेगुलेट होता था इंडिया में इट वॉज फ्रॉम रेगुलेशन इट वेंट टूवर्ड्स मैनेजमेंट एंड ओपनिंग ऑफ द इकोनॉमी स्पेशल आफ्टर द एल पी जी रिफॉर्म दिस मूव वॉज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इंट्रोड्यूसिंग फेमा वॉज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट आप लोगों ने ऑलरेडी फाइनेंस स्टैटिक में ये सब पढ़ लिया होगा देन ऑल्सो गवर्नमेंट सिक्योरिटीज एक्ट विच एम डेट अमेंडिंग द वेरियस लॉज दैट प्रिवेल्ड स्पेशली टूवर्ड्स गवर्नमेंट सिक्योरिटीज इनमें चेंज लाए गए जो सारे लॉस थे उनको कंसोलिडेट करा गया उनमें अमेंडमेंट्स लाए गए सम अदर लॉस लेजिस्लेशन इंपॉर्टेंट भी अनाउंस हुए हैं पेमेंट एंड सेटलमेंट सिस्टम एक्ट 2007 थाउजेंड सेवन दिस इज ऑल्सो वन ऑफ द की लेजिस्लेशन इंट्रोड्यूस्ड विच चेंज हाउ द ग्लोबल द आउटलुक ऑफ इंडिया ओके अनादर फ्यू ऑर्गेनाइजेशन सी सी आई एल इट एक्ट एज क्लियरिंग एंड सेटलमेंट मैकेनिज्म फॉर सिक्योरिटीज राइट ट्रांजेक्शन इन गवर्नमेंट सिक्योरिटीज foreign exchange so this was introduced in 2001 under the rbi clearing corporation of india is also known as central counterpart counterparty aimed at providing clearing and settlement for transactions in government securities foreign exchange markets rtgs sabko pata hai real time gross settlement introduced in 2004 isme kya hota hai interbank jo transactions hoti hai from one bank to another it is done in real time and gross basis ओके रियल टाइम में होता है विच मीन्स इमिजिएट होता है एंड ग्रॉस बेसिस पे होता है नॉट नेट बेसिस सो स्टैंड अलोन ट्रांजेक्शन का रिकॉर्ड फ्रॉम वन बैंक टू वन अदर होता है अनलाइक इन एनी एफ टी जिसमें नेट बेसिस पे होता है ऑल्सो इन एनी एफ टी देर इज नो मिनिमम और मैक्सिमम बैलेंस बट इन आर टी जी एस द मिनिमम बैलेंस इज टू लैक्स टू लैक की ट्रांजेक्शन कर सकते हैं टू लैक्स और अबव कि आप ट्रांसफर कर सकते हैं फ्रॉम वन बैंक टू अनदर सो इफ आई हैव टू ट्रांसफर सम सर्टेन अमाउंट ऑफ मनी विच शुड बी मोर देन टू लैक फ्रॉम माय अकाउंट टू लेट्स से माय ब्रदर्स अकाउंट आई कैन यूज दिस आरटीजीएस मैकेनिज्म ओके सो दिस वाज इंट्रोड्यूस अब तो सबको पता ही है देन एनडीएस ओ एम प्लेटफॉर्म नेगोशिएटेड डीलिंग सिस्टम ऑर्डर मैचिंग वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इसकी फुल फॉर्म इंपॉर्टेंट है सेबी में भी पूछ सकते हैं आरबीआई में भी पूछ सकते हैं नेगोशिएटेड डीलिंग सिस्टम ऑर्डर मैचिंग इट इज नथिंग बट जो सेकेंडरी मार्केट में आपकी गवर्नमेंट सिक्योरिटीज में आप ट्रेड करते हैं वेन यू बाय एंड सेल इन द सेकेंडरी मार्केट स्पेशली द गवर्नमेंट सिक्योरिटीज वो कैसे होता है इट इज डन ऑन अ स्क्रीन इट्स अ स्क्रीन बेस्ड इलेक्ट्रॉनिक अनोनिमस ऑर्डर मैचिंग सिस्टम सो फ्रॉम नाइन ए एम टू फाइव ए एम ट्रेडिंग कर सकते हैं थ्रू गवर्नमेंट सिक्योरिटीज एंड दिस ट्रेडिंग इज डन ऑन एन एन डी एस OM platform negotiated dealing system order matching this was introduced by RBI why specially for secondary market trading of government securities i hope it's not clear hai you can also google these in detail but it is already covered in finance static section okay then the governor also talked about a few parameters how nominal gdp has increased right external trade has increased so nominal gdp has increased four fold from 64 lakh crore in 2010 to 273 lakh crore in financial year 2023 now jo bhi data ab ab march ke baad aayega that is relevant for your exam after march 31 the end of financial year jo bhi data aayega that will be important for your exam this data is not that important but you have to know that there has been a four fold increase from 2010 2023, okay? So सिर्फ data का trend आपको analyze करना है आपको समझना है and because it was talked about by the governor in his speech, तो हमारे लिए specially interviews में phase टू में ये important होता है 
External trade has also increased again fourfold from 29 lakh crore to 137 lakh crore. FDIs, जो है वो टू एंड हाफ टाइम्स इंक्रीज हुई है द फ्लो ऑफ रिसोर्स टू द कमर्शियल सेक्टर हैज डबल्ड हैज डबल्ड फ्रॉम ट्वेल्व लाख करोड़ टू ट्वेंटी टू लाख करोड़ देन अराउंड ट्वेंटी टू लाख करोड़ देन द बैंक जो है उनमें भी जो मार्केट बोरोइंग है इन द कमर्शियल सेक्टर दैट हैज ऑल्सो इंक्रीज फ्रॉम सेवेंटी फोर थाउजेंड करोड़ टू थ्री लाख सिक्सटीन थाउजेंड करोड़ ओके सो लाइक आई सेट ये डेटा एग्जैक्टली इंपॉर्टेंट नहीं है बट यू हैव टू नो कि क्या ट्रेंड रहा है स्पेशली नॉमिनल जी डी पी एंड एक्सटर्नल ट्रेड अदरवाइज इकोनॉमिक सर्वे का जो डेटा होगा दैट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर यू बजट का भी एंड जो एंड मार्च मार्च थर्टी वन के एंड में जो डेटा आएगा दैट इज हाईली इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर योर एग्जाम स्पेशली जी डी पी डेटा एक्सटर्नल ट्रेड जो भी डेटा है वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर आर एग्जाम्स ओके नाउ कमिंग टू वेरियस स्टॉम्स एंड हाउ हैज आर बी आई हेल्प द इकोनॉमी मूव और सेल थ्रू द स्टॉम सो इन टू थाउजेंड एट द ग्लोबल फाइनेंशियल क्राइसिस इस टाइम पे जो ग्लोबल फाइनेंशियल क्राइसिस हुआ था इट हैड अ रिपल इफेक्ट ऑन नॉट जस्ट द यूएस इकोनॉमी बट अदर इकोनॉमीज इज वेल बट इंडिया सेल्ड थ्रू द स्टॉम वेरी ब्यूटिफुली एंड उस टाइम पे हमारा फोकस क्या था to maintain enough liquidity, liquidity कम ना हो इसीलिए आर बी आई मूव टूवर्ड्स ईजिंग मॉनिटरी पॉलिसी अदरवाइज फॉरक्स रिजर्व को मेनटेन करना हमारा फोकस था आर बी आई का फोकस था एंड हैविंग अ क्राइसिस मैनेजमेंट फ्रेमवर्क वॉज ऑल्सो द फोकस सो द फोकस एट दिस पॉइंट आफ्टर द ग्लोबल फाइनेंशियल क्राइसिस वॉज ऑन दीज फैक्टर्स सो इस टाइम पे आर बी आई यूज वेरियस कन्वेंशनल टूल्स लाइक आई सेट इंटरेस्ट पॉलिसी इंटरेस्ट रेट्स पे आर ने फोकस करा रेपो को डिक्रीज करा सो दैट यू नो डिपॉजिट्स इन बैंक्स कैन टेक प्लेस देर इज इनफ लिक्विडिटी इन द इकोनॉमी सी को भी यूज करा एंड पॉलिसी इंटरेस्ट रेट को विच आर नोन एज कन्वेंशनल टूल्स आज आपको ये भी पता लग जाएगा कन्वेंशनल और अनकन्वेंशनल टूल्स में क्या फर्क है सो कन्वेंशनल टूल्स आर नथिंग बट ऑल दीज बेसिक टूल्स दैट आर अंडर द पॉलिसीज मॉनिटरी पॉलिसी ओके अनकन्वेंशनल टूल्स वील स्टडी फर्दर ओके Forex market measures may be direct intervention लिया गया during the 2008 crisis. Now, from 2008 global financial crisis to now coming to the COVID-19 pandemic, I think you all are aware उस time पे क्या हुआ था There was need of liquidity in the economy. Policy rates were further reduced and systemic liquidity was expanded. And one more thing was done. Policy corridor को widen करा गया Now, what is this policy corridor? so we have repo rate in the middle and we have sds standing deposit facility i already i have already explained this in my previous video then we have marginal standing facility so standing deposit facility forms the floor rate and this forms the top rate okay so in mein jo difference tha it was 25 basis point ka both side 25 basis points ka difference tha dono side pe But what RBI did was during the pandemic, RBI asymmetrically increased this. Why are we saying asymmetrically increased this or widen this corridor? So this this forms a corridor, liquidity adjustment facility or policy corridor. RBI जब अपनी policy रहती है, तो repo rate define करती है and उसके basis पे SDF and MSF automatically define हो जाते हैं. Why? Because it is a policy corridor and जो Widen करा था सो आर बी आई इंक्रीज दिस गैप फ्रॉम ट्वेंटी फाइव बेसिस पॉइंट टू सिक्सटी फाइव बेसिस पॉइंट तो ये जो पॉलिसी कॉरिडोर फिफ्टी बेसिस पॉइंट का था विच इज ट्वेंटी फाइव प्लस ट्वेंटी फाइव इट वॉज ए सिमेट्रिकली इंक्रीज टू नाइनटी बेसिस पॉइंट ड्यूरिंग द पैंडमिक ओके ओके ऑल्सो ट्रांसमिशन ऑफ पॉलिसी के लिए और भी टूल्स लाए गए थे नाउ वील स्टडी वॉट आर द अनकन्वेंशनल टूल्स तो 2008 ग्लोबल फाइनेंशियल क्राइसिस में आरबीआई फोकस्ड ऑन कन्वेंशनल टूल्स व्हिच वर व्हाट लाइक सीआरआर एंड अदर पॉलिसी इंटरेस्ट रेट नाउ आरबीआई फोकस्ड ऑन अनकन्वेंशनल टूल्स लाइक लॉन्ग टर्म रेपो ऑपरेशंस टारगेटेड लॉन्ग टर्म रेपो ऑपरेशंस ओके सो आल्सो जीसैप अभी हम पढ़ेंगे व्हाट आर दीस जीसैप गवर्नमेंट सिक्योरिटीज एक्विजिशन प्रोग्राम इसमें जीसेक जो होते हैं गवर्नमेंट सिक्योरिटीज उनको उनके साथ आरबीआई ने कैसे बाइंग एंड सेलिंग करी दैट इज अंडर जी सैक जी सैप ओके वील अंडरस्टैंड दिस इन अ मिनट ऑल्सो ऑपरेशन ट्विस्ट इट इज नथिंग बट स्पेशल ओपन मार्केट ऑपरेशंस 
what are open market operations wherein rbi buys and sells security in the market ओके जब आरबीआई गवर्नमेंट सिक्योरिटीज को बाय एंड सेल करती है इशू करती है दैट इज नथिंग बट ओपन मार्केट ऑपरेशंस राइट बाइंग एंड सेलिंग ओके टॉकिंग अबाउट गवर्नमेंट सिक्योरिटीज एक्विजिशन प्रोग्राम लाइक आई सेड स्पेशल ओपन मार्केट ऑपरेशंस है ये एंड ऑपरेशन ट्विस्ट भी दोनों स्पेशल मार्केट ऑपरेशन है इन दोनों का जो फोकस है दैट इज ऑन यील्ड दैट इज ऑन यील्ड ऑफ सिक्योरिटी ओके सो अंडर दिस it is different from omos in three ways what are these three ways firstly omos mein buying and selling hoti hai gsap mein there is only purchase right gsap mein there is only purchase and no selling of government securities second ek yahan pe focus jo hota hai wo yield pe hota hai yield of government securities agar rbi buy karegi and sell karegi this will have an impact on government uh, security ke prices which will have an adverse impact on the yields then the third one is omos may banks are aware that an omo is going to take place but jo gsap hota hai it is done by the rbi on its own discretion and thus banks are unaware about this gsap program so this is a special program conducted by the rbi for purchasing securities which will have an impact on the yields okay then ltro long term repo operation so this was asked in phase 2 exam very recently rbi ke descriptive mein aaya tha ye question write a short note probably yes that was the question write a short note on long term repo operations so it is just like uh, term repo operations but under this rbi ne longer maturity period pe focus kara term repo operations which were for which were for 3 years this was done to inject more liquidity in the economy so just like repo operations jo hoti hai to inject liquidity in the economy it is done just like that but for the period of maturity was long term this time it was from 1 year to 3 years i think 1 lakh crore ka rbi ne decide kara tha ki the uh, repo operation hoga during this time and the maturity period was increased from 1 year to 3 year okay talking about operation twist operation twist kya hai again a special open market operation isme kya hota hai the rbi buys and sells securities at the same time so rbi buys and sell securities government securities at the same time sell kyu karti hai to suck liquidity in the economy and suck liquidity out of the economy when rbi will sell uh, securities it is sucking liquidity right taking all the money from the economy and buy kyu karti hai to inject liquidity in the economy but iska focus open market operation jo operation twist hai iska focus was on yield iska focus was on yield okay so here what rbi does is rbi purchases long term securities long term securities ko rbi purchase karti hai and jo short term securities hai unko sell karti hai to short term securities ko jab rbi sell karti hai What happens is इनकी supply बढ़ जाती है When supply increases, price falls and yield of short term security is increased. When supply increases, demand is low, price falls, price and yield have an inverse relation. Thus, yield increases. Opposite takes place in long term securities. So long term securities को RBI buy बाई करती है दस रिड्यूसिंग द यील्ड ओके सो दिस वॉज ऑल्सो परफॉर्म बाय द आर बी आई स्पेशली After the pandemic, talking about the Ukraine war, so pandemic समझ लिया, global financial crisis समझ लिया, Ukraine war. So last one year से जो भी हो रहा है, we all have been witnessing rupee depreciation. सबसे पहले तो we have witnessed जिसकी वजह से forex पे बहुत ज़्यादा impact पड़ा है. RBI had one, uh, you know, I think during 2021 or 2022, very recently, RBI had the highest forex reserves. I think it was more than 600. million something i i am not sure about the amount but rbi had the highest forex reserves so rbi now had to dip into its forex reserves rbi had to dip into its forex reserve to save the falling rupee right another impact was on inflation so inflation was above the band of 2 to 6% inflation was above the band of 2 to 6% thus monetary policy tightening pe focus kara gaya Uh, especially since last 3 4 quarters rbi has always focused on 
टाइटनिंग मॉनिटरी पॉलिसी इंक्रीज द पॉलिसी इंटरेस्ट रेट्स राइट वाई दिस टुक प्लेस इन्फ्लेशन कमोडिटी प्राइस राइज क्यों हो रहा था बिकॉज ऑफ ग्लोबल सप्लाई चेन डिसरप्शन बिकॉज ऑफ द वॉर सो बिकॉज ऑफ यूक्रेन वॉर देवर कमोडिटी प्राइस राइस विच लेट टू इन्फ्लेशन विच लेट टू आर बी आई मॉनिटरी पॉलिसी टाइटनिंग ओके ऑल्सो इस टाइम पे वॉट वॉज हैपनिंग वॉज द मेजर बैंक इंक्लूड मेजर सेंट्रल बैंक ऑफ ऑल ओवर द कंट्री सब में ही इन्फ्लेशन हो रहा था दैट इज वाई देयर फोकस वॉज ऑन इंक्रीजिंग their focus was on uh, increasing their interest rates and the focus was on tightening liquidity tightening uh, monetary policy taki liquidity kam ho and jiski wajah se inflation kam ho in their economy right so major central banks focused accelerated policy rate hikes and focused on tightening liquidity to tackle inflationary pressures okay so sare hi banks ne ye kara including rbi fed रिजर्व ने भी अपने प्राइसेस को इंक्रीज करा था जिसकी वजह से बहुत ज्यादा आउटफ्लोज हो रहे थे फॉरेन इन्वेस्टमेंट आउटफ्लोज हो रहे थे राइट जो एफ जो इनफ्लोज होते हैं दे वर टर्निंग इनटू आउटफ्लोज दी ऑल द डिपॉजिट्स दैट वर ऑलरेडी देयर इन इंडिया दे वर आउटफ्लोइंग द फॉरन इन्वेस्टर्स वर गोइंग अवे फ्रॉम इंडिया टूवर्ड्स द यूएस इकोनॉमी बिकॉज ऑफ हाइक इन फेड वेरी रिसेंटली राइट सो दिस टाइम द पॉलिसी रिस्पॉन्स वॉज एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव मेजर्स लिए गए थे आउटफ्लोज को कंटेन करने के लिए एंड इनफ्लोज को इंजेक्ट करने के लिए रिसेंटली अभी एक और न्यूज थी दैट यू नो नॉन रेजिडेंट इंडियंस कैन नाउ यूज यूपीआई वन ऑफ द मेजर्स टू इंक्रीज इनफ्लोज इन इंडिया ओके ऑल्सो एक्सपोर्ट्स प्रमोशन के लिए भी बहुत फोकस करा गया था ताकि अगेन इनफ्लोज आ सके फॉर एक्स रिजर्व हमारे दोबारा इंक्रीज हो सके तो रुपी ट्रेड मैकेनिज्म रशिया के साथ करा गया था वेरी रिसेंटली रूबल रुपी इंटर कंट्री ट्रेड मैकेनिज्म वाई टू प्रमोट एक्सपोर्ट्स एंड टू सेव द फॉरेक्स रिजर्व ओके सो एवरी रिस्पॉन्स तो नाउ द कंक्लूजन दैट वी आर सीइंग इज एवरी रिस्पॉन्स वाज अ फंक्शन ऑफ द अंडरलाइंग मैक्रो इकोनॉमिक कंडीशन आरबीआई ने एक स्टैंडर्ड रिस्पॉन्स नहीं रखा है सारी मैक्रो इकोनॉमिक कंडीशन के लिए सारे स्टॉम्स के लिए देर वाज नॉट अ स्टैंडर्ड मैकेनिज्म फॉलोड बट एवरी रिस्पॉन्स वॉज अ फंक्शन ऑफ द अंडरलाइंग मैक्रो इकोनॉमिक कंडीशन मीन्स दैट दीज वन दीज वर वेरिएबल द मेजर्स टेकन बाय आरबीआई वर नॉट स्टैंडर्ड but rbi focused on three very important aspects the first one being ki jab bhi liquidity management operations karne the chahe wo mutual funds ke through ho ya nbfcs ke through ho banks have been at the center so these have been always done through banks which are liquidity conduits of the reserve banks so the governor has called banks as the liquidity conduits of रिजर्व बैंक जो भी लिक्विडिटी मैनेजमेंट ऑपरेशन थे राइट वो बैंक के थ्रू ही होते हैं बैंक आर दाइंग एंड सेलिंग सिक्योरिटीज मेंटेनिंग सिक्योरिटीज राइट इंटरेस्ट रेट का जो भी पॉलिसी इंपैक्ट होगा सब बैंक बैंक के थ्रू ही आता है इकोनॉमी पे राइट सो दे आर आर देंटर ऑफ एवरी थिंग दैट इज वाई देन कॉल्ड लिक्विडिटी कॉन्डुट्स सेकेंड चाहे जो भी इकोनॉमिक स्टॉम्स हुए हो RBI, the central bank has remained cushioned from counterparty risk. जो भी headwinds, tailwinds आए हैं on uh, because of the global economic crisis or any other global economic storm, RBI has been resilient. The central bank has been resilient and has remained cushioned. When we say remained cushioned, we mean that we have in return taken steps. So if we were attacked by these storms, we have in return taken steps. to stand strong against all these storms right so rbi has remained cushion third the most important of the measures at this time were time bound jo bhi measures liye gaye the unko reverse kara gaya they were time bound it is not like they have been going on even today for example jo gsap ki humne baat kari hai government securities acquisition program jo rbi leke aaya tha it was dis discontinued similarly jo liquidity widen kari gayi thi after the pandemic like i said so the policy corridor was was widened was widened and increased to 90 basis point usko dobara stabilize kara gaya tha to introduce standing deposit facility right so standing deposit facility ko operationalize karne ke liye isko dobara uh, theek kara gaya tha okay so it was again managed okay so today this was the conclusion today when we look ahead we still see challenges but we can prepare them 
with optimism and confidence also the indian financial markets have developed appreciably appreciably over the years liquidity in the government securities and overnight money markets have grown okay so this was the entire speech all about i hope you have understand isme se specially descriptive page 2 ke answer writing questions aa sakte hain and you can take points if a question is asked on let's say what has been the rbi's measure during the pandemic or after the russia ukraine war to aap yahan se kuch points le sakte hain and you can mention it in a way like for example as per the rbi governor or as per rbi governor speech during this event jo bhi aap fir points mein likhna chahe moving on to the second news rbi's digital payment index so digital payments have been growing in india sabko pata hai npci jo hai they have introduced so many mechanism for payment system payment and settlement system ke andar digitally aap transactions kar sake so for that npci has product so many uh, introduced so many products in the economy and the onus lies on the consumers to use these products efficiently and to increase financial so financially aap log literate bane and also the uh, financially to increase the base of digital payments in india that is always the aim so the reserve bank constructed and peri- construct and periodically publish so because of growing digital payment it was decided that the reserve bank shall construct and periodically publish the digital payment index right a digital payment index why it will capture कि कितनी एक्सटेंट की डिजिटल पेमेंट्स हुई है व्हाट हैज बीन द इंपैक्ट ऑफ दिस इंट्रोड्यूस प्रोडक्ट्स डिजिटल पेमेंट जो प्रोग्राम्स आ रहे हैं हाउ हैज बीन दिस बीन इंपैक्टेड एंड आर दे बीइंग एफिशिएंटली यूज्ड द डीपीआई वुड बी बेस्ड ऑन मल्टीपल पैरामीटर्स बहुत सारे पैरामीटर्स लिए गए हैं एंड बेस्ड ऑन दैट अ डिजिटल पेमेंट इंडेक्स इज फॉर्मड इट इज इंट्रोड्यूस्ड सेमी एनुअली सो दिस payment index is introduced semi annually by rbi so it shall reflect how accurately the penetration and deepening of various digital payment modes has been taken place in the economy so like i said parameters there are five broad parameters they are measuring the deepening and penetration of digital payments in the economy let's see what are the parameters first one is payment enablers which holds weightage of 25% then payment infrastructure demand side factors supply side factors payment performers who has the highest weightage of 45% and customer centricity so sare hi from all angles from all five angles this uh, you know the parameters have been uh, in conclu- included in this digital payment index right let's see ab inke andar kya aata hai when we talk about payment enablers we have internet mobile aadhar inki wajah se making payments has become easy these have enabled the payment system in india in ki wajah se aap payments kar sakte hain some of these are platforms like mobile aadhar bank accounts they are very important because if you won't have a bank account how will you be able to make digital payments right then talking about payment infrastructure demand side and supply side so demand side is from the point of consumers hum log retail consumers kaise payment kar sakte hain through debit card credit card PPIs instruments these are nothing but just like e wallets right customer registered mobile internet banking fast tags right how we as customers can make payments and how banks when it when we come to supply side measures we talk about how what has bank provided to uh, make ease in payment system in india so bank branches banks correspondents atm pos terminals etc talking about payment performers these include digital payment system by volume and by value dono mein kitna increase aaya hai ye map hota hai value mein bhi volume mein bhi unique users kitne add hue hain performance kya rahi hai ye wo map kar raha hai paper clearing currency in circulation kitni increase hui hai and last consumer centricity aims uh, focus on consumers awareness kitne aware hue hain decline uh, yeah so complaints fraud system everything so so what is the purpose of this digital payment index in sare parameters pe map kara jayega ki digital payments or digitally kitna penetration hua hai and how are we as customer using them so it has been construct so yes march 2018 ko base liya gaya tha it was set at 100 so march 2018 period was taken up as the base period 
and it will be published on the RBI website on a semi-annual basis from March 2021 onwards with a lag of four months. So, अभी का जो data है, it is for the month of September 2022 तक का data है, and this time the digital payment index has been at three seven seven point four six, which was hundred in March 2008 and three forty nine point three zero in March 2022, right? Taking uh, March 2018 as the base, which has been given the value of 100, now we are at 377.46 in the period ending September 2022. Right? ये दो important data हैं. Also, this March one is also important. Okay? Because a question can be asked कि कहाँ से कहाँ तक increase हुआ है? It has been increased from 349 to 377. Okay. The last news. So the economic survey was released very recently. And like I said, the chief economic advisor said, because of the digital technologies, digital infrastructure, we can see a significant increase in the GDP uh, going forward. And thus, uh, we are going to talk about a few technical, um, digital technologies, digital infrastructure that has been empowering, especially in economic reforms. How has they helped bring economic reforms? Talking about data, US, uh, data usage. So only certain decisions we are talking about, certain path points. That are mentioned here. For example, this is just an example. Sharing data and information between CBDT, which is for direct taxes, Central Board for direct taxes, Central Board for indirect taxes and customs. So, in ke beech mein uh, data sharing, data and information sharing easy ho gayi hai because of again, like I said, digitally in ab in ke beech mein data sharing easy ho gayi hai, which has resulted in efficient gains in the tax system. So, ab tax evasion possibility bahut kam hai at the same time. जो भी होता है वो बहुत इजीली पकड़ा जाता है राइट द टैक्स इवेशन दैट टेक प्लेस सो द डेटा शेयरिंग एंड डेटा इन्फॉर्मेशन तो ये पहले जो कॉन्ट्रैक्ट था इट वाज विद दिस यस सी बी ई सी ओके देन इट इज विद नाउ इट इज विद इनडायरेक्ट टैक्सेस एंड कस्टम्स एमएसएमई में जो चेंजेस आए हैं एमएसएमई का एक एग्जाम्पल है यूपीआई पेमेंट्स दीज हैव हेल्प एम एस Okay, ONDC and GSTN account aggregates. These are certain examples of how digital technology has been helping MSMEs. So, if a question comes in phase two, how has digital technology helped MSMEs? You can write all these examples in your answer, even for your interview if it is asked. So, they have created more opportunities for MSMEs. In ki wajah se, for example, UPI hai payments bohot easy ho gayi hai, fast ho gayi hai. Jis ki wajah se MSME can now focus on other things. And contribute more towards GDP, right? सबसे ज़्यादा है ease of transactions, ease of making payments. ONDC की वजह से open network for digital commerce. It is nothing but like the name goes, open network for digital commerce. E-commerce जो होता है sale and purchase of goods digitally, electronically. E-commerce जो अभी तक होता था वो platform centric होता था. For example, Amazon. Flipkart, yeah, if you had to purchase anything online, you would go on that platform, right? But now an open network is created for buyers and sellers to buy and sell goods and services. So an open network has become open. Now there is no platform. Platform centric has become an open network centric system wherein buyers and sellers can make transactions or buy and sell goods and services. GSTN, it is nothing but an uh, you know a non-profit organization, which it is an IT organization helping GST, helping in GST, and uh, you know yeah right. So it is nothing but a non uh, non-profit organization. IT services may help करता है GST में. Account aggregators इन सब ने MSME में बहुत ज़्यादा help करा है. So I have already explained what is OND ONDCs. It is an initiative aiming at promoting open networks. For all aspects of exchange and goods and services over digital or electronic networks, ONDC is to be based on open source methodology using open specifications, open network protocols, independent of any specific platform. So, like I said, platform centric से हट के अब open source mechanism आ गया है, wherein all the buyers and sellers can buy and sell goods. Open on an open network, right? So, you, so the sellers don't have to register on one particular platform, and also the buyers don't have to register on one particular platform. For example, Amazon or Flipkart. Now, open network or open source methodology is coming. 
अकाउंट एग्रीगेटर्स क्या होते हैं सी ऑल द फाइनेंशियल इन्फॉर्मेशन दट यू एज कस्टमर गिव टू बैंक और अदर फाइनेंशियल इंस्टीट्यूट एंड इफ यू हैव टू गिव द सेम इन्फॉर्मेशन टू अदर फाइनेंशियल इंस्टीट्यूट और अन अदर यूजर ऑफ दैट फाइनेंशियल इंस्टीट्यूट फॉर एग्जाम्पल एन एन बी एफ सी दट यू गोइन टू टेक अ लोन और अ कंपनी वॉन्ट्स टू टेक अ लोन फ्रॉम एन एन बी एफ सी सो अकाउंट एग्रीगेटर्स क्या होते हैं ये इन्फॉर्मेशन प्रोवाइड करते हैं फाइनेंशियल इन्फॉर्मेशन फ्रॉम वन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन फ्रॉम वन फाइनेंशियल इंस्टीट्यूट टू अदर एंटिटीज हु वॉन्ट्स टू यूज दैट इन्फॉर्मेशन बट दे टेक कंसेंट of the individual जिसकी information transfer हो रही है so account aggregator is a type of RBI regulated entity जिनके पास already NBFC AAA license होगा वो account aggregators बनते हैं that helps individuals securely and digitally access and share information from one financial institution who they have an account with to any other regulated financial institution that is in the network of account aggregator data cannot be shared without the consent of the individual okay so these account aggregators have helped msmes talking about how blockchain technology has helped ye sabko pata hi hai firstly cbdc bhi introduce ho raha hai you can write this as well in your answer okay talking about another example electronic cargo tracking system so ab gps based mechanism se जीपीएस बेस्ड ट्रैकिंग यूज करके कार्गो ट्रैकिंग यूज हो सकती है दिस वाज इंट्रोड्यूस्ड बाय सीबीआईसी राइट दिस इज बेस्ड ऑन ब्लॉकचेन टेक्नोलॉजी टू ट्रैक मूवमेंट ऑफ कंटेनर्स एंड कार्गो स्पेशली इंटर स्टेट एंड आल्सो इंटर कंट्री सो आई थिंक बांग्लादेश एंड नेपाल में भी ये इंट्रोड्यूस हो गया है फ्रॉम इंडिया ऑल द कार्गो गोइंग फॉरवर्ड विल बी ट्रैक इलेक्ट्रॉनिकली नाउ डिजिटल ये आपकी जो ट्रैकिंग है कार्गो ट्रैकिंग वो हो रही है डिजिटल पेनिट्रेशन यहां तक आ गया है ओके टॉकिंग अबाउट एजुकेशन सो सामग्र शिक्षा स्कीम का एक एग्जाम्पल लिया गया था द एग्जाम्पल ऑफ सामग्र शिक्षा स्कीम वेर इन द गवर्नमेंट सपोर्ट सेटिंग अप ऑफ स्मार्ट क्लासेस आई सी टी लैब्स इन स्कूल इसमें आप अटल इनोवेशन मिशन भी लिख सकते हो अटल टिंकलिंग लैब्स ऑल्सो टॉकिंग अबाउट सपोर्ट फ्रॉम हार्डवेयर एजुकेशनल सॉफ्टवेयर एंड ई कॉन्टेंट फॉर टीचिंग की भी प्रमोशन हुई है अंडर द स्कीम सो दिस आर्टिकल ओनली मैंशन अबाउट द स्कीम स्पेशली बिकॉज ऑफ द रिसेंट इकोनॉमिक सर्वे में भी ये मैंशन हुए हैं टॉकिंग अबाउट हाइपर लूप टेक्नोलॉजी इट इज नथिंग बट really fast speed uh, transportation technology introduced recently. I think Elon Musk has also talked about this hyperloop technology and for that Indian railways. has collaborated with IIT Madras to develop a hyperloop technology which is like i said a fast uh, travel technology introduced for setting up center of excellence for hyperloop technology at IIT Madras so like center of excellence which will work towards this hyperloop technology will be set up at IIT Madras a collaboration with indian railways was done okay so this brings us to the end of the session let's look at the questions before that this is our app if you haven't already downloaded you can bahut sari information aapko yahi se hi mil jayegi the first question is dash is a type of rbi regulated entity that helps an individual securely and digitally access and share information from one financial institution they have an account with to any other regulated financial institution under these the data cannot be shared without the consent of individual the answer is account aggregator which of the following is our features of ltro it is aimed at injecting liquidity in the economy under this the reserve bank conducted auctions of targeted term repo up to 3 years tenor true under this an on tap facility was provided to banks for purchasing securities this statement is true on tap facility means any bank at any time can use this technology so this can use this mechanism for buying securities theek okay? hai for purchasing securities okay which of the following statement is are incorrect about rbi's digital payment index the rbi published digital payment index annually every year it comes semi annually not annually as of september 2022 digital payment index is 377.46 which is correct the base year of dpi is 2017 no it is march 2018 which of the following is our correct about parameters of rbi's digital payment index payment enablers includes mobile internet participants etc the highest weightage is given to payment performers customer centricity includes atm pos terminals knows uh, this atm pos terminals was from the performer supply side right payment performers supply side so this statement is incorrect 
and this i think yes this statement is also incorrect payment enablers uh, yeah this statement is correct payment enablers mobile internet participation okay so payment enablers mein aata hai internet mobile aadhar to ye statement this statement is correct payment infrastructure mein aata hai demand side which we as consumers are demanding for payment infrastructure supply side mein aata hai which the banks are uh, or uh, and for example institutes like npci is giving us for digital payments payment performers mein aata hai kya performance hui hai unki mapping customer centricity mein awareness frauds aise pointers aate hain okay this brings us to the end of the session i hope you enjoyed it uh, thanks for watching also keep preparing for your exams especially the economic survey and budget which has been uh, introduced very recently usko padhiye that is very important for your exam all the best thank you